Sports Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit Hi, back, everyone. relax, take that midweek break, wave at you, and uh, maybe <laughs> sometime in the next 30 minutes to an hour, you'd never know with us, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and everything fun. I'm Vin, that's Jill, and that's Pedro. <laughs> He's over there. I am? Because no, it says not. the burning fool down here. <laughs> hey man, you are the burning fool this week. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been up to, Pedro? Uh, I've been, uh, well, I actually went to see a new place today, and I very much liked it, and I've already put down part of the money. Uh, I need to uh, wait for them to run the reference check and everything else to let me know how much else I'm going to have to pay uh, to get into there. Uh, my guess is in and around another £1,750-ish, at least. <laughs> Ooh. So, yeah. <laughs> How about you, Jill? Anything yeah. fun and exciting? Nothing? Oh, just another yeah. <laughs> boring, regular week for you, right? No, definitely not. <laughs> well, everyone, uh, two weeks ago, I said I had a secret, secret to tell of something involving uh, me and Linux. And, well, now I, it, it's, it's finally happened. It's not finally happened, but it's happened. Uh, <laughs> several people in a chat. And the Linux Chicks LA have nominated me for the Red Hat Woman in Open Source Award. And I'm extremely honored. I, I'm just, yeah, very honored. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to win, but I'm, I, it feels like I already have one because of all the tremendous support. And it's nice. been really, really <laughs> awesome. And I want to do a special thanks to Romeo Sidvicious, one of our patrons, because he was, he was one of the first people that approached me about it. So that was really cool. And he nominated me. <laughs> so. it. I did it before you two got done. I have no idea what either of you said, but <laughs> not a, no, congratulations, Jill. Congratulations. Aww, not you. a lot going on here. Um, nothing crazy anyway. I'm still reveling in the fact mm -hmm. that uh, MIDI cables old school MIDI cables, you would think it would be the USB interface, everything would work fine, which it did for the most part. But to make everything hum on our little audio setup, that's what it was. Two $6 cables. Mind you, they're almost three meters long, but <laughs> good on you, um, 80s technology. Good yes. Good on you. Um, <laughs> Electricity, how does that work? It, it's bits. I mean, I, listen, I, I definitely had a mind fart moment on our pre-pre super shows. And I was like, are MIDI cables analog or digital? To which Pedro retorted. Uh, don't know. Uh, musical <laughs> Never thought of that. <laughs> musical instrument digital interface? Digital yes. interface, right. She remembers. <laughs> she showed up. <laughs> All right. A um, little bit of sad news starting off. Uh, what's what's going on with the Free Music Archive, and why is that? Oh. It's gone. It's, it's dead. dead. <laughs> it's like Tuesday's gone, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this first bit comes from Wired, and it's definitely in our show notes along with everything else. They report that the website will be offline by the end of the month, and it's calling for help. I mean, it, they genuinely want some people to come out and give a hand with archiving this site. It's already been thrown at archive.org, but if you have individual things, playlists and the like to get those saved and yep. eh, it's been a while. <laughs> um, it's been running for a yeah. long time. It was a place for people to release their work, creative commons, share alike or anything like that. And that's where we picked up a gang of music. That was mm -hmm. one thing it was good for. And a lot of artists like, hey, this is where we first started. This is where we uploaded tracks. And yeah, it was interesting reading through some of the comments. Like, this is where we get our start. Unfortunately, I would say probably in the last two, possibly three years, you really have run into two problems. Was people uploading copyrighted work to it, mm -hmm. which wasn't checked. And a slightly more nefarious than I personally ran into twice was... Art, one was actual artist, and I was like, shame on you. They uploaded it years ago under, you know, Creative Commons, and that's fine. Then they monetized it through YouTube and went back and tried to retroactively change mm -hmm. the license for that. Like, yeah. Ooh, I don't want to fight yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Jill, Aww. you got yeah. some, you're not happy about this, I take no. it? No. 
no, I was really, really sad about this, especially since this is where I send all my animation students to get their music for their their videos um, because it's got the best selection and a wide, wide variety of music. And so I was really saddened by this, but I'm so happy that it's going to be archived at um, archive.org. So we will still have access to all that wonderful music. So that's really yeah. cool. And I, and I know they're working on getting it in the Wayback Machine and, and whatnot. So that'll be really awesome. Pedro yeah, and there music. are. Uh, <laughs> I'm not the person who likes music the most in this place. In fact, um, I very much share my my life with a singer, a soloist, <laughs> soprano. So, so what you're yeah. saying is, if it's not Nickelback, yeah. it's not New Year's. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. But no, it, it is actually very, very sad to see it go away. It's good uh, that it is uh, being preserved uh, and being maintained of sorts into the Wayback Machine. But it will, it will be sad to see the Free Music Archive just gone. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. it's uh, really sad to see. Uh, yeah. yeah, hopefully, it'll live on in some future incarnation. Yep. All right. Yeah. So, so up next, uplifting we have, happy uh, news, Pedro. <laughs> well, we have a bit of non-news, to be honest. Oh, look, it's another malware that targets Linux, and it it needs root to do anything. Right. Okay. So it's another one of them. And I quote, well, <laughs> paraphrase, but very frighteningly close it's to quoting what I read on Twitter. This is where I would found this story. It's like, ha, huh, I thought Linux was more secure than Windows, whatever. <laughs> well, uh, no, it's a, it's a um, coin miner, uh, core cares dot AB uh, is the name of the, um, the malware. And it is just a little bit of a coin miner that runs in the background and it uses a rootkit to hide itself from the... Uh, the H tops and the system monitors and everything else. So basically in an ideal situation where you would have run that pseudo command that you copy pasted off the internet, uh, it will just hide itself and you will never know it's there except for the lack of performance that your computer is suddenly um, presenting itself with. But yeah, if you are that person, if you are just copy pasting, uh, or downloading files off the internet and then running them with sudo, you kind of had it coming. I mean, that, yeah. that, that one's <laughs> on you. So that's, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, honestly, and as the article goes on, I mean, there, you just need to use common sense <laughs> really, mm -hmm. with, with uh, you know, monitoring your systems and whatnot. And, and the article says, you know, minimize the use of unverified libraries or repositories of course, and employ good security practices and access control policies. Yeah, so not yeah. just anyone can access those hard drives. And of course, patching and updating your system systems. Uh, that's, you know, just just common practice. And, and uh, <laughs> they need to take heat. People need to take heed of that. So they're not getting this horrible bug. <laughs> I saw this and I was wondering, um, just reading the headline, and this is probably going to be um, a repo, a media plugin, if you will, for people attempting to pirate live. Click on article. Yes, it is. It's that. Mm -hmm. 100%. <laughs> and I personally think the headline should read, you know, what happens when filthy Windows users pirates. When the pirates yeah. from Windows try mm -hmm. Linux. Well, I need it the same. And unfortunately, this is what you end up with. Um, yep. Have you ever experienced this? Because you were touching on ways to notice that your computer is doing something that you don't know that it's doing. Now, hiding from HTOP, but if we're doing crypto mining or more importantly, anything that's going to be taking advantage of all of your threads, all of your business, you're going to notice the fans. Mm -hmm. that, that's uh -huh. the, your first warning right there. It's like, why are you going off? What's happening? What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> that has happened to me. That happens here in the studio more than often, not because I'm trying to get the noise ceiling just stupid low. 
and I will hear the fans basically go from completely inaudible to like, mm, like oh, boom, what's this? Uh, <laughs> I'm yes. tracking something down. It's completely pointless. And it's a harmless whatever doing something. Oh, it's, yeah. like, well, I would say harmless, like rebuilding the thumbnail database, but that's a monster of a process. <laughs> Yeah, that takes a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. Don't provide your root password for anything. Yeah. Just don't. <laughs> also, don't sell your Ubuntu. <laughs> or do. No, You're not yes. Marshall's worth. <laughs> well, this is something very happy <laughs> for those of us in the community. This is uh, the recent article. Um, with a with that, Mark Shuttleworth says he has no plans to sell Canonical anytime soon. Yay! And um, when we covered the news on LWW two weeks ago, when IBM acquired Red Hat, Mark Shuttleworth had put out a statement on the IBM acquisition of Red Hat. And after reading that article several times, I felt that Shuttleworth was saying that Ubuntu will remain committed to business as usual, and no company will be re acquiring its assets. Well, this most recent article reaffirmed that belief and what I what I felt about reading the previous article and that um, his vision for Canonical and Ubuntu has not yet been achieved and he was not ready to sell to anyone yet. <laughs> Maybe in the future, but not now. <laughs> Maybe after he goes IPO. <laughs> so. Canonical is in a weird place because they do bring up... Um, Shuttleworth mm -hmm. sold his company for 500 plus million, almost 600 million back in the day. And it, it yeah. does put Canonical in a interesting place because as the article points out, rightly so, they don't really need the money. So yeah, that is one thing as much as I'll, I, I use the LTS because if you need a desktop multimedia LTS, pretty much the right game to do. And I give mm -hmm. Canonical a much harder time because I use it than I would otherwise. But, you know, I know we both, all three of us have taken shots mm -hmm. at, you know, Mir was a dumb <laughs> duplication of efforts, but I'll also at the mm -hmm. same time sit back and go, you need a company with the resources to be able to do stuff like that. Exactly. They didn't know. Yeah. They, they exactly. could have come up with something else. And it, it's interesting that they're able to follow, you know, ideas as opposed to everything mm -hmm. has to be by the bottom line. One of the nasty situations, which I'm sure Shuttleworth is fully aware of, is once you have investors with an IPO, that means you have a board. You've seen the nightmare yes. fuel that Elon, uh -huh. mm -hmm. the former chairman or current whatever, I think he's stripped all titles from the company. He's like, ha. You want some more 420 jokes? Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> just yes. dealing with that nightmare. So what do you think, Pedro? I don't I I don't think everyone has a price tag though, right? Yes. Maybe. And uh in the article they do say that um uh, Shuttlesworth did have a bit of an ideological price tag that said that the only mm -hmm. concession that he would make was if someone wanted to buy Canonical to further its development in much the same way that he has envisioned for it. So yeah. whatever that may be, because right <laughs> now no one knows. <laughs> Uh, but they seem to be investing heavily on the cloud stuff, and uh, for a while there, they seem to be heavily invested on um, design and getting the convergence bits. But the moment that the IPO became a possibility, all that convergence talk, all of that Ubuntu phone, all of that Unity, all of that mirror, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Poof. <laughs> <laughs> You have to put so, that together, though. I mean, that, you know, yeah. I mean, from a strategy way in order to do oh, that. Oh, yeah. yeah. You have to. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like, okay, so this is neat. We wanted to do this. But the community has been pretty split on it. And no one with any actual money seems to see any use on this. So we're just going to let it go and then wait a while for the IPO to release and I'm guessing that's what they're doing now is they're currently waiting and they uh, do say, uh, Shuttlesworth did say that the IPO remains a viable option so as long as he doesn't give away like 
a controlling amount of shares to anyone, he's still the boss. If he so. main, maintains 51%, I, I could yeah. see that. And it's definitely a terrifying thought, I'm sure, for anyone <laughs> with any company, because it is true. Everyone has a price. And when somebody shows up yeah. with a check, you definitely have to sit back. I could use our mm -hmm. little thing that we do here. It's like, could you sell out? And that would be a horrible thing, and you would want to maintain control and keep with a vision. But then again, you're going to have this other group of people going, well, we really think Pedro needs to cut his hair. Aww. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah, here's a uh, half a million dollars. But if you want another half a million dollars next year, yeah, then you're going to uh, need to breathe in some helium before you start doing the show. <laughs> you see, I, we these are very, very silly base. examples. And of course, I'm half expecting Nori to pop her head out of the corner and go, yes! <laughs> All right, that's the... Yeah. Let's talk about some good news in music. Yes, mm -hmm. so, new thing. Um, well, it's an odd thing, and not just because it's called Odeo, uh, it, or, or as the first comments on that particular Reddit thread point out, Odeo means hate, or hatred in Spanish. What an odd choice yeah. of name. Portuguese, too. <laughs> Same in Italian. Okay, so now that they have uh, gotten the obvious out of the way, Odeo is a, well, it's a, an online radio player, it's a bit of an aggregate. It's built in Electron, because of course it is. Uh, and it just uh, finds whichever Blast FM and some other uh, national radios, if uh, they can find the online streams, uh, and they mesh them all into one unified GUI. Which, and don't you worry, don't you worry about what I'm about to say, because I will keep mm -hmm. on... Uh, finding ways to uh, just poop on Electron from on high, but it does have a use. And that use is to make web technologies and make web technologies work well in a desktop environment. And that's a good thing, especially when it comes to aggregating a bunch of different uh, radio stations, which have wildly different levels of website design and making them all work together with one single unified experience. That's a very good thing. That is, in my opinion, what Electron should be for mm -hmm. everything. <laughs> So a few weeks yeah. back, somebody <laughs> asked, is Pedro going to hate on Electron? Oh, yeah, they built the episode? stupid browser in Electron. Yeah. <laughs> this, this was a question asked to which I respi uh, replied. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, they built a browser in Electron. I will never let that yeah. go. <laughs> Jill, do you have some yes. thoughts? Yes. Yeah, I, I, like, I like Pedro. This is... Um, ODIO is has a really nice user interface, and yes, it, it makes the best use of Electron. And there are um, a lot of other music players um, and radio streamers in the space, like G Radio, Radio Tray, Lollipop, and of course you can use VLC, Rhythmbox, and Clementine also as great alternatives. But what's what's really really nice is this: it's much more organized than the one that I've been using for years, which is Stream Tuner Two. Um, I've been using that app for years, and um, I'm going to start using uh, Odeo uh, a lot more now. <laughs> it's it's really good, yeah, and really cohesive. One thing that got me a little mm -hmm. sideways. What are your thoughts on this? This is only available as a snap, and I mean after after the mm -hmm. initial knee jerk <laughs> hatred of Electron, you're passionate, passionate, just, <laughs> uh, all things against Electron. Did you stop for a minute and go, hmm, why is this only a snap? Is is this a further conspiracy to make your life even worse, <laughs> no. Pedro? I, uh, I know. I don't know yeah. if it's a conspiracy, but oh, one I thing that know. annoys me greatly. I, I have to that... sit where you two can talk at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, scooch, uh -oh. Jill, scooch. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, my uh -huh. thing about Snap, and it's still a thing to this day, is that stupid lowercase folder that it creates in your home directory. <laughs> it's not a hidden folder, it's just a stupid lowercase Snap folder that it places yeah. there. Why mm -hmm. hasn't yeah. that changed? 
Listen, <laughs> why? why don't you? I, the only thing I don't like about the snaps are the way they're mounted. When I type in DF and I see a gang mm-hmm. of things that are not mm-hmm. disk drives, it's like, you need to hide like, that from yeah. all the CH roots. All of them. <laughs> anyway, that's Holy War for actually later yeah. in the show. Um, yeah. <laughs> I want to give this a quick mention because Cloudflare, they keep doing awesome stuff. And I know it's all for the, the end goal will be horrible, nefarious, and evil. But we're not there yet, kids. So let's keep praising them falsely. Uh, they've released a... Um, app for android to mark all of your dns's to one 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 there's nothing to worry about there's no ads or anything like that if you're granted let's be real vpn is the best way if you're going to be out and about on untrusted networks Mm -hmm. however as a free alternative i would think at the very minimum send the data bits through the dns of your choice be it not cloudflare Mm -hmm something else because inspection is done there as well and you can hijack some things oh yeah mm-hmm. and you can actually test to see if your uh, dns calls are being leaked somewhere but yeah. no this is this is this is just a good thing good on you uh cloudflare yeah good on you <laughs> it'll also speed things up i mean every dns yeah. bench that i've run locally uh the only thing that reliably beats um i because it's pretty much a dead heat between Google and Cloudflare is Mm -hmm. level three communications DNS. So, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So it should, uh, your name, name system, um, should, it should improve the ping. Definitely. (laughs) It's kind of fun. It's terrifying, but, most importantly, Linux Jill. goes to space. Most importantly, yeah, Jill. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to try yeah, it for the I'm... third time. Most importantly, Jill, it's not in space after important. Pedro jumped on it. And all right. Oh, no, good, that good was Jill. okay. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, one of my favorite <laughs> subjects, uh, computers in space. So in 2017, a Hewlett Packard Enterprise Supercomputer was brought to the ISS and will soon be open for science experiments. And um, actually, <laughs> with, long, long story, this came about because of the Soyuz mission uh, failure. And uh, so now this, this computer, is gonna, which wasn't intended to be used this long, is going to be used now to calculate data in space, which will save scientists on the ground time and precious bandwidth. And of course, mm-hmm. as we know, there's not uh, data going to and from the station. Station is very limited, so it's really nice to have all these calculations done in space. And yep. the other, you know, unique thing about this is that it was just your classic pizza box server. And yeah, pizza box server for the win. Um, they they can inst- withstand the perils of sp- space flight. Doesn't surprise me a bit. Those things are, are built very, very well. But this is the first time that they've relied on a standard computer in, in space and one that wasn't made for the rigors of space and whatnot with embedded you know, SOCs and uh, processors. Oh, but there were uh, <laughs> systems that didn't do so well in space, weren't there, Jill? Yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so there were, there were nine SSDs out of 20... Um, drives that failed in space and they got to figure out why but but um and they're gonna you know definitely run tests on it to see why that happened but my 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 question is you know why did nine of the computers 20 solid state drives fail god well you either (laughs) yeah (laughs) you got a a bad batch and you should have used spinning rest as a backup because on the space station, they use laptops with spinning rust, and those hard drives have had never had a problem. <laughs> Cosmic rays do strange things, and yes, they AI do. would never say never. Now, when we're yeah. dealing, like, especially, <laughs> it's kind of interesting if you look into how much bandwidth do you think they have on the ISS, Jill? Um, it was, yeah, I, I think last I had checked, it was only, it was le- less than five megabit, but that may have changed. Oh, yeah, they... <laughs> Finally, because yeah. I followed that a while back, they upgraded their KU band. So, like, they almost have what would consider, like, the poor man's broadband. 
Um, yeah. It's a, mm-hmm. I think like 150 to 300. Yeah. But, but yeah. it's like having a cable modem from Charter Communications, high Charter Communications. Exactly. Uh, your <laughs> upload speed is only about three <laughs> to 25. Yeah. <laughs> And, of course, it is just beaming stuff out into space, so the latency is going to kill you. So much so that if they wanted to send one of the entire data sets from the ISS back down to the ground, it would take hours. Hours. In low Earth orbit. Latency, yeah. especially with the KU band, it's not as crazy Mm -hmm. as you would think. If you start looking into, I know, um, Tesla, Elon's making space internet. And there's Mm -hmm. also another company, which I did know about doing the same thing, like 4,000 satellites. And I was doing some research and I was like, oh, that's actually going to be usable. Is it Facebook? No, it's not Facebook. (laughs) Yet. Yet. (laughs) Facebook might just buy the company. Uh, (laughs) That was exciting. (laughs) Linux in space. Who would have thought? Probably everyone. Hey, we wanted to give it a plug anyway because it desperately needed to know. No, it's cool. Deal with it. We're nerds. Yeah. Sisket. Yeah. Pedro, it's, <laughs> it's your new BFF, right? <laughs> it is interesting as a concept. It's a unified package manager that will support installing packages from apt, yum, whatever. It's like every single um, widely used uh, package manager that you can have. Uh, flat packs as well. Um, that's the new feature. Uh, they will let you install. And version 2.0 is now out with flat pack support. Uh, the ability to install, remove, upgrade multiple packages at once, and the ability to change the path that the sysget config file with just an environment variable. Uh, so installation is pretty easy. In- some of the mm-hmm. supported package managers. I'm like, oh, come on. Some of these have to be made up, right? <laughs> uh, no, those all no? look... <laughs> yeah, no, those all look... Uh, that's homebrew for Mac, because, yes, it also supports Mac OS. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, no, it is interesting. And if I had one bit of criticism, because I'm that person, and I always have a bit of criticism, is that the command that you run, which is sysget install package or sys get remove package or sys get search burr mm-hmm. it is about three letters longer than it needs to be you could mm-hmm. easily go with syg sig sig install package yeah. sig remove mm-hmm. package sig search mm-hmm. package yeah that'll do it i actually looked for uh other packages that would uh give you the sig command they don't exist what if you as just far wanted to wave current that a generation repos go the what? <laughs> no. Somebody's going to get I, that. All right, Jill. Give me some uh, well, we missed what you said. Sorry, Ben. <laughs> so, uh, command line universal package manager for the win. Yay. I love this. I loved playing with it, too. It was a lot of fun. And um, like Pedro was saying, it's a front end, front end wrapper script for package managers. And what's nice about it is it uses, you know, Debian apt-get commands and is very easy to use. And what I thought was cool is when you run it for the first time, you're asked to choose which package manager you want to use. And of course, you pick the one that your distro <laughs> is, is using. But it was laid out really nicely. I, you know, I thought I was going to have to go in and, and do some configuring in a text file and whatnot. And no, it, it was right there when you launched it. So Yeah, <laughs> it and awesome. Strider brings up a... <laughs> A strangely pertinent question. Uh, does it do package name translations? No. No, it does not. No. So you're no. still going to have to type down that package name as it is uh, on your distro of choice. So, yeah. Does it support mm-hmm. an I'm feeling lucky option? No. Uh, no. <laughs> they could, but I don't think that's in yeah. yet. <laughs> well, much to the chagrin of the author of our um, uh. next article, who believes <laughs> that uh, package management is still stuck in the late 90s on Linux. <laughs> <laughs> it would seem so. This comes from Computer World. And uh, who is this? Steven J. Vaughn Nichols. Oh, ZDNet guy. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of brilliant. He yeah. says, the <laughs> Linux desktop with great success comes great failure. Linux is both the most popular operating system and niche end user OS. How can that be? Question mark. Follow along, my friend. Follow along. 
comma, my friend, comma. <laughs> I would take issue with that grammar, but I'm not going to do it. Um, so when, every time I see something like this, I don't know about everyone listening. It's like, you're going to bring up fragmentation. So I'm control F and sure enough, here it yeah, was. It's almost at the end, but he mentioned Too it. Too <laughs> The Linux desktop yeah. has also been plagued by uh, fragmentation. It's like, ah, mm -hmm. there it is. Now, yeah. he does bring up two points, and the first one being something that I'll reluctantly agree to, is that the desktop issue. And we do have a lot of different desktop managers and the like, which, let's be honest, this could easily be solved if everyone would just install XFCE4. <laughs> we wouldn't have this problem. Easy fix. Um, but that is a legitimate issue. And the second one, the second one caused me to scream Ratch my brain noodles, my brain meats, just a bit. It's about containerized packed systems and brings up the point, well, snaps only work here and flat packs only work here. Pedro, why might I take the smallest bit of issue with that? Because you can actually have both running on all the distros, also app images. Uh no, I don't believe you. That that's no. This, this is 1998, Pedro. <laughs> no, app images are there. They're a thing. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I kind of thought, Joe, maybe I'm crazy. Yeah. But the whole point of self-contained um, packages was portability. Maybe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And to me, I mean, it, it's it's a little ridiculous. Yes, I do agree a bit with the the desktop. We have a wonderful choice under Linux. And that's the beauty of it. And there are OSs like Ubuntu, for instance, who, you know, released their version of GNOME or, you know, was Unity and um, uh, did it very successfully. But there's also so-called fragmentation with the, on the Linux, uh, um, with Linux on the server side and cloud infrastructure. And that doesn't seem to hurt anything. <laughs> In fact, that is the reason why it excels because there is choice. <laughs> So, so any, any, and, uh, he talks about that in the article too, about how, you know, Linux is of course dominant on the server side. Well, it's because of that fragmentation and that open sourceness that it works. <laughs> you know, I'm, I could just say, this is another one of those articles, kids. Yes. Uh, yes. By, I would propose an interesting uh, experiment to okay. the Linux development community. All right. I'm listening. Like all the distros out there mm -hmm. create a another spin that is like your best packages, your best offerings, but it, call it the default, like the Linux default. And we would have a Ubuntu default and a Fedora default and a whatnot default. And they would all be running the same package manager, hey. the same. Hey. Um, I'm going to tell you, Pedro, that, that <laughs> distro already exists and it's called Arch. B. <laughs> B. Ooh, you want to talk you're, about you're, starting Flame Wars? You're 100% saying conversations I distinctly remember having in 1995. Mm -hmm. The idea, and the concept, right witnessing, realizing the fragmentation and the obvious solution to it has been a thing for well over two decades. <laughs> and I fear we've made little to no progress on the desktop. No, in that that's aspect. why I'm proposing it again. Yeah. It's like, one package manager, one container uh, technology, one desktop environment, one display manager, one uh, set of uh, libraries. Go with that. So another and, way yes. to take what you're saying is that you're a communist that hates freedom. Uh, no, I'm saying come together. Right now. <laughs> come together and create the default Linux. It will be seen as a joke. It will piss a lot of people off. That's inevitable. But someone will see the point in that and go, huh, Jill, let's make sure this works. <laughs> Jill, how will you yeah. solve this lingering issue on a podcast in two minutes or less? Oh boy. Uh yeah, uh, you, uh universal uh, window manager for the win. <laughs> well, I've already taken care of that. Oh. Running XFCE. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 
<laughs> yes, and I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> Pedro, ironically, is not because his XFCE Mate. section. I'm talking about yeah, the computer you're tape. on. We were talking about that before oh. we went live. Pedro is running Unity right now. This Pedro. No. This one. Jill's on XFCE, though. That, that's yeah. still a thing. Um, yeah, good luck with that. Uh, and also, uh, my friend over at Computer World, you might want to upgrade that Red Hat 6 and Destro. Some things have changed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, maybe you like our content. Maybe it's the thing you enjoy doing. Um, we do have the pre-pre super shows, and and uh, Jill, you actually showed up. A lot of people showed up Friday. What did you think about that? Let's pretend I'm asking you a question for your feedback. Oh, okay, okay. Um, on uh, yeah, we had. Oh. Yeah, we had uh, a great. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> just spaced. <laughs> I take full responsibility because I did that intentionally. You broke Jill, then. Hey, you man. Broke Jill. <laughs> Listen, I'm trying to be nice and polite this episode, so every now and yeah. then I gotta be like the cat that knocks the wheel. Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, the Friday Foo Bar was was awesome. It was uh, re really awesome. Uh, we played Jackbox Party Pack Five, <laughs> so we had a lot of people show up. And we had a lot of people show up in the after show on LGC Weekly. So that was really cool, too. Pre pre super shows is kind of fun. It's where we have our uh, weekly oh. get together. <laughs> and it's one of the things that we can do to kind of talk about what's going on behind the scenes and everything like that. Pedro, what type of craziness would be involved in order to gain access to such a thing? Ooh, uh, well, see, you could, nap, you could kidnap one of our children. Wait, none of us have children. Way ahead of you. Wait. Uh, uh -oh. Okay. Uh, um, so, ooh, I know. You can get to Patreon.com. Give me one moment, Pedro. I need to write an apology note to your name. <laughs> <laughs> if you go to uh, Patreon.com uh, for slash Linux Gamecast, that's uh, the way that you can guarantee access to everything. Well, everyone already has access to everything, but if you want it right there and then, you go to Patreon <laughs> and you. Um, Pick one of the tiers that best suits your needs. Yes. Uh, you can get in on the discords or you could uh, get access to the show notes or you could get access to the pre pre super shows and yes. maybe <laughs> even get access to all of the streams just a teeny tiny little bit early. Mm. So you could feel really smug and then uh, you could feel really good your about yourself at the end of the day and <laughs> supporting independent media. That's yes. kind of awesome. And we yes, want to thank everyone we... for uh, doing that it's been fun and yes it's we've okay. had about 10 people in pre pre super shows yes, yes we did <laughs> um so let's get right into a slice of pie <laughs> yeah what do we have this week mm, gaming we never get to do that except every <laughs> single saturday for six years um super game pads at retro pie and an original super nintendo controller it's a thing because who needs a raspberry pie wait wrap it around that a Nintendo controller does. then Pedro perks up real quick. I saw this because it definitely looked about a thousand times better than anything I've ever seen in a store that, and I know the holiday season's coming up. I think a kid would prefer something like this. What are your thoughts on that, Pedro? Yeah, no, the, that, you know, the expendability of, that you don't get out of the box with the Nintendo minis and the form factor. It's, it's a controller that you plug into your TV and it's got however many games as big an SD card as you can find. That That's awesome. That's actually really awesome. <laughs> Jill? Yeah, this was uh, this is one of my uh, favorite uh, Raspberry Pi Zero projects uh, today, definitely. Um, it's, it's my favorite controller of all time. So this is just, uh, that was really cool. And this is a... Uh, beautiful beautiful uh build it uh i i i love how he still integrated the original uh, snes controller but then you 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 do a, a 3d printout of the bottom part mm -hmm. so that you could get the 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 power and the hdmi connection and so that was really really well done and of course it runs retro pie and it's really really cool i want one actually <laughs> yeah and in my opinion mm -hmm. it actually improves on the design because i do have a controller that's trying to emulate the um super nintendo one and if i had one complaint is that it's a little too thin so my big old mm. man child hands can hold this very easily 
didn't need to touch a microphone then, but I did. Uh, <laughs> so in, uh, increasing the thickness actually makes uh, the uh, the ability to grab the controller uh, much more suited for big man-child hands. So yes, <laughs> I like it. It is neat. That would make some man-child like Pedro very happy at Christmas. You were listening to me, Nori? I'm trying to get you on the cheap here. Uh, I like the idea. And there's a lot of stuff you could shove into there. Uh, I kind of had some thoughts about racing wheels because we see it in controllers, mm. but we never see it in mm. racing wheels. And you have a lot more oh, yeah. flexibility with the shifters and the foot oh, pads. And I totally yeah. saw two racing wheel sets at the thrift store the other day and didn't buy them because I knew I'd get into some foolery like that. <laughs> Trying to do the world a favor. We don't need me into that. And uh, all right, Jill, do you like risky yeah. stuff? Yes. Oh, definitely. Yay. Um, this <laughs> is a uh, Risco Esco's open source under the Apache 2.0 license. And this is really, really awesome. We've been wanting this to happen for a very, very, very long time. And um, this is uh, will will be really great because, as we know, Risk OS was the original OS for the Acorn computer systems from England. Archimedes, which ran, yeah, Archimedes, <laughs> which ran the ARM processor. So um, this was the OS uh, for that computer, and it, it'll be it'll be nice to have a competitor to, you know, Raspbian in the Raspberry Pi space. So I, I'm looking forward to this. It's really, really cool. And it's as also much as I yeah. want to agree with you there, Jill, sorry to interrupt, but as That's much okay. as I want to agree with you, <laughs> this is not going to compete with Raspbian. Raspbian's already no. taken the cake, eaten it, uh, had a poop, and made another cake to eat. So... <laughs> Well, that, it's yeah, uh, yeah. it's runoff and as yeah, neat <laughs> further evidence ladies and gentlemen that Pedro hates freedom <laughs> I don't hate Aww. freedom I think it's a really nice uh, niche operating system for those people who want to have a look at the uh, progenitor of ARM operating systems uh, basically uh, and it's open source now. You can actually, uh, this article uh, is from October 22nd, and they actually have a open risk cost version available for download right now. It supports a current, uh, a decent number of architectures, but of course, you know, it's got risk in the name, so x86 is not one of them. How about real questions? <laughs> yeah. What can I do with risk cost today other than go, wow, that's a curiosity, and keep going on? Uh, no, that that is its sole purpose. Mm. So yeah. it's educational. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, actually, um, Risk OS is still used in the industry for... Um, 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 it's used by Oracle, Jill. It's used by Oracle. Yeah. We yeah. don't mention yeah. them. <laughs> oh, I know. I know, yes, very true. But yeah, no, the only reason I was, you know, obviously Debian is the king, but, but it, it, it it is nice to have another OS that we can play with. That was the original one developed for the ARM processor so that's really cool <laughs> all right sounds like a thing mm -hmm. uh we did get a couple of pieces of feedback but nothing that we're going to trouble you with because <laughs> oh, they were okay. um <laughs> i do the only requirement i have is it can't be on the first page of google if you're asking a question but i got back to you <laughs> on the youtube comments i was kind enough to do that so if you would like to get in touch with us pedro how do we hide that maybe next week well, we hide it very poorly. If you, for some reason, end up on this obscure website, that's actually kind of sadly true, Look at this. Uh, called linuxgamecast.com, uh, and you hit the contact button. That was almost perfect. It was almost perfect. That's a legitimate screenshot, too. I did no extra editing to that. <laughs> But yeah, if you click the contact button, there's a little form you can fill. Uh, just type in your name, your email address, your uh, subject, and your message. Make sure to pick LWDW from the little choosy box at the top and prove to Google that you are not a robot. Uh, once you do that, we will be more than happy to feature your thing right here. Unless, like Ven mentioned, the answer to your question is in the first page of Google. We'll get back to you. We'll get back to you. All right. I think that was well said. Because uh, we need yes. to get out of here and get the show. Oh. <laughs> Come join us live at 3 p.m. Eastern time. You can follow us on YouTube. 
That's the thing. You'll get notifications when we go live. If YouTube we're feels basically like it. live four or five days a week. Well, sometimes you will, <laughs> and sometimes you won't, because it's YouTube, and they're going to randomly unsubscribe you, not just from us, <laughs> other people as well. That's just something that we weirdly accept in this day and age. <laughs> but uh, swing by tomorrow. Jordan will be finishing off the Borderlands Friday. I think I'm going to be playing some multiplayer, online multiplayer, uh, when multiplayer super tux card we're going to be shaking Yay. that down and possibly mm -hmm. some murdering of charlie's <laughs> and of course saturday we got that business so mm -hmm. uh what we do it's terrifying stay away pretend i said nothing do not hide your parents it's the real demon nine <laughs> 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 okay beautiful people we're gonna hit the music and uh kind of thank all the beautiful people who Make this show possible with their names in credits, despite them asking us not to. <laughs> well, there was that one instance. It's like, did, did you, did, did, no. <laughs> oh, <laughs> credits still, still bork, so. Okay. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> well, thank you to Vin Stone, to Pedro Mateus. And, and of well, course, thank you very too. much, Jill. <laughs> oh, even though I messed up the segment. You didn't mess up a segment. Ven did it on purpose. He oh threw you God. a curveball. I was, I was just... <laughs> it's so bad. That was deliberate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And for complete lack of apology and excuse, you got to learn how to handle that. So there's no yeah. way out there to do it. Uh, I guess. Yeah. I don't usually. Uh, yeah. yeah. No. Five odd something years uh, doing Linux Gamecast Weekly, and I still can't handle that half the time. So. Yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I apologize. Bye, Frank. <laughs> Oh, just get Aww. off, Frank. That's what you done did. I broke. Frank's gone back to his planet, Ven's basement. Yay, Frank! Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. We love you. <laughs>